So for the benefit of the unfamiliar guys, here's an injector that's been removed from the rail, right? So what does it consist of? It basically consists of this plastic body, as you can see, two contacts there, one for the uh, supply and one for the uh, control uh, that is attached to the, the vehicle's harness via a connector or something similar to this. This plugs into the uh, fuel rail. The O-ring keeps everything tight here, both air and fuel tight. And... Um, separating it from the intake manifold of course and uh, the injector internally consists of basically a coil of wire that can uh, pass a current through forms a magnetic field and there's a pintle or a pin here which seals upon a seat and when the magnetic field is formed via the coil the pin lifts up this is pressurized with fuel on this end so the pin lifts up allowing the fuel to exit and spray into the uh, intake manifold just up line of the uh, intake valve. Let's take a look at the uh, fuel injector. This is the fuel injector rail on my car. So most cars are uh, going to be laid out in a very similar fashion uh, wiring uh, wise guys right. So what do you actually have an injector? You'll have a 12 volt uh, battery feed and you'll have an intermittently switch to ground uh, control line on the injector yeah. So what you want to do is you want to look to see what is the common. So there we have a black with a red tracer. Looks like a blue with a cyan tracer. Black with a red tracer, blue with a red tracer. So right away, just looking at cylinders four and three here, you can tell that the black with the red tracer is the common line, right? Black with a red tracer, black with a red tracer. Doesn't really matter what the other colors are. Clearly, this is the 12 volt feed. Why? Because it's common to all four guys. Makes sense. And these are uniquely switched to ground. The other wire that is cylinder one here, uh, the blue with the yellow, that is the switched uh, to ground uh, in order to control the, uh, the injector coil. So keep in mind guys, although it's a 12 volt feed that switched to ground because it's a, a coil, like any coil, it's going to have a flyback or uh, an induction kick when the uh, when the ground is removed via the ECM. This is a high enough voltage to damage your DSO-152. The input voltage is specced on the DSO-152 at 40 volts, uh, plus or minus, if I recall. This could be high enough to damage it. So, make sure you use an attenuator, right? I have a 10 times attenuator. As long as you have attenuation on there, um, perhaps your scaling may not be correct, but as long as you've got reasonable attenuation to drop the signal um, to something the scope can handle, you should be safe enough. But doing so without an attenuator, uh, you put your scope at risk, okay? So let's get a look, see what we can get on the scope. Okay, so my apologies to the guys who are well familiar with this. This will be over explaining things, but understand that some of the guys who watch this video this will be brand new to them in concept right so just following the uh, setup here guys right so i have the scope itself let's actually look at what i've got set up here um as usual um i usually tell you to have uh, a time base of uh, 20 milliseconds and 20 volts uh, on the entire screen so let's set that up so that's 20 milliseconds but if you recall i said the exception will be for injectors or ignition systems right so in this case what i want to see is um, i'm expecting the spike to be around 50 volts 60 volts 70 volts so i want to be able to see the entire uh, waveform on screen so i've got um, 10 volts per division actually selected so that'd be 10 10 20 30 40 50 60 volts we could see to the top of the line here where i actually have the channel marker set now i've got 20 volts towards the negative side if uh, I need to adjust it, right? So again, 10 volts per division, 20 milliseconds. That may or may not be fast enough. I don't know. We'll uh, take it as it comes. I've got it selected, the coupling on uh, DC. I've got the uh, trigger select, set, set for auto at the moment. I'll change that to normal once we actually have an image on screen. I suspect this is going to cause the image to scroll, but we'll see. I've got the adapter, the mini coax going to the standard uh, BNC, and I have my attenuator itself. Again, this is 10 times. 
which reminds me, I forgot to set the attenuation. I'm on attenuation here. Let's go to 10 times on the attenuator here, guys. Let me just move the selector away from that. So you can see, 10 times attenuation. Uh, so the line comes up, and uh, make sure it's not getting fouled on uh, your exhaust. It won't get cooked. It's not going to get sucked in by your belts or anything, guys. Obviously, consider the hazards there. So again, not to over-explain things. I've got my one line going to battery ground, battery uh, negative, right? The ground line, if you will. And I've got my probe here so that I can select it. I can back probe the injector itself. So I'm going to turn the key on, the ignition on. So what will what will happen is we'll get the 12 volts presenting on one side, on, on actually both sides of the uh, um, uh, connector here. Because if you can appreciate if the... If the if the ground is lifted, what you're going to get is 12 volts going through, uh, going to the feed side of the coil and going through the ground side as well. And of course, the ground is lifted. You'll get 12 volts on both sides. So let's see if we can actually see that now. Okay, so let me uh, let me bring you back to the scope here, guys. Again, 10 volts per division, 10 times attenuation in my case. Uh, I wanted 10 milliseconds there. Let me go back. Sorry, I wanted 20 milliseconds. So it's 20 milliseconds now. DC coupling, okay? Um, easy way to check. Uh, you've got uh, good connections here, guys, is, uh, of course, with everything hooked up. Again, the battery ground in place or battery negative is just go a uh, the battery positive and just touch the probe. And, of course, you should see the lift on the, uh, on the line. Okay? So you know you have a good connection there, yeah? Before we start testing anything else. Right, so I expect to see 12 volts on both sides of the, uh, the plug here, guys. Again, because the car is not actually running. This is the battery feed side. There it is, 12 volts. And this is the switched ground side. And because, of course, the, bat the uh, injector is not operative, it's going to be ungrounded. We'll see 12 volts on this side as well. And there it is. So my apologies there, guys, when I was talking about that in the video, I was clearly out of frame with respect to the connector and uh, I'm taking it for granted. Some of you guys will know what most of you guys will know what I mean by back probing. Some of you guys will not. So the term back probing simply me implies taking your probe on the connector itself and actually back probing the uh, wire in order to get contact with the uh, so your probe is getting contact with the contact of the connector itself, right? So that is the 12 volt supply side. And again, if I wanted to back probe the uh, control side, simply a matter of going to the other wire, back probing that. And you can feel a definite, although, you know, on video, perhaps you can't tell. You can when you're actually pushing the pin in, don't force it, but you'll feel a definite resistance when you hit the contact. And obviously your scope will reflect when you have uh, contact on the pin as well. So I hope that's the switched ground side here. And you can see we've got 12 volts. I'm gonna start the car. I'm gonna open my garage door so I don't kill myself with carbon monoxide. We'll let the car run. Again, make sure you're uh, clear of any, uh, uh, it's not, you know, on the exhaust uh, manifold or, you know, none of the belts are gonna uh, ingest any of your uh, wiring or stuff. Don't damage your gear, right? Right, let's start the car and see what happens. Okay, so here's the trace we actually have here, guys. Uh, clearly, the 20 milliseconds is not quite fast enough to see any real significant detail here. Let's change the uh, time base. Let's lower that. And again, we're having issues with the uh, auto um, uh, trigger in here. Let's see if we can make something a wee bit more sensible here. Let's change the trigger. be able to give you a run-in commentary while the car was running there guys um, while I tried to capture this uh, um, image uh, this waveform of uh, of the injector uh, in operation and uh, managed um, but it, it was a little trickier than I thought one of the shortcomings of this little scope is is when you set the trigger right it wants to constantly trigger on the very edge of the uh, trace right so what I was getting was essentially 
didn't matter whether I set the uh, the trigger um, in auto or manual or single was no an issue, but uh, in auto or manual, the issue was on the leading or on the rising or falling edge here. And you can see I've got it set for the falling edge eventually, but I actually put it off scale. And that way I could have the trace actually walking across. Again, why? Um, because because it constantly wants to trigger on this edge, all I was getting was this portion of the image from the pencil to the towards the right hand side of the screen presenting right here. Quite annoying. Again, you can only set the trigger on a vertical scale on the uh, on the y axis and um, there is no x axis uh, trigger selection so it's constantly wanting to trigger on this edge of the screen. That's a problem if you want to try and center uh, the image constantly triggering near the center of the screen where you can make it make sense, right? And uh, it's not really optimized as far as the time base either because of the same issue. I just couldn't get it um, in a happy medium where I could get it to trigger and present in a reasonable detail. So this is really the best I can do. It was in auto, and again, it was triggering. It was auto triggering. This the uh, image was walking across the waveform was walking across the screen, and I manually captured it. You can see it's in stop mode at the moment. Anyway, all that to say, we finally got an image on screen which is you know somewhat usable, and um, you can certainly see that the injector is is functional. In fact, you can see it's functional to quite a reasonable degree. And let me just walk through what's happening here on the uh, trace, right? So again, this is our 12 volt feed, which is coming through the coil guys, right? And because the coil is not grounded at this moment, it's uh, open circuit essentially. We're reading the 12 volts. Keep in mind it's 12 volt, it's 10 volts per division. And I had the 10 times attenuation actually hooked up, right? So you can see here that from the channel marker here, Again, I just positioned the channel marker to try and optimize the image that I could capture. You can see it's about 12, 12 14 volts and change-ish running, of course, right, is the is the steady state of the, uh, the system, around 14 volts-ish. This point here is where the ECM applies the ground to the uh, number one. It was the number one um, injector coil that we were measuring here. It applies the ground, of course, by applying the ground is going to pull it directly to ground and it's important that it gets pulled all the way to ground in order to have a functional injector guys otherwise you could have an issue with the switching or the ground side of the circuit right a high resistance on the ground side of the circuit if it doesn't go all the way to ground so once it's pulled all the way to ground this is the injector uh, on time this amount of time here two milliseconds per division it's just a little over that, I would say, right? We don't have any cursors, but we can eyeball that this is around one division-ish, maybe a little more, maybe towards three milliseconds in uh, um, injector on time. Injector on time is not the same as injector um, open time, guys, but that's a discussion for another day. Um, so this is the injector on time. Here the magnetic field is is uh, forming uh, with the coil. It will get to a point where it will be formed enough to actually lift the pentle of the injector. We cannot see this on a voltage trace. If we had a current trace, we could see that, but we can't see this on the voltage trace. So at the end of the uh, injector on time, when the uh, engine control module actually um, lifts the ground, you can see that this is where we have the uh, injector induction spike right and again we're at 10 volts per division so one two three four five about 50 volts uh, induction spike i've measured this on other scopes on my own car guys so i know that this is about correct about 50 volts of induction spike ish hence the need for the attenuator right again the attenuator the 10 times attenuator was on this is a plus or minus 40 volt uh spec out scope any higher than that, you could potentially damage it, right? Hence the need for the attenuator. So here you can see the inductive spike. And you can see here that what we have is a bleed on that induction spike back down to the system voltage, right? But there's a little artifact on the, uh, on the trace right here, this little bump. What is this bump? 
This little bump here is where the injector actually goes back to the seated position as the magnetic field collapses. You can see that on a voltage trace. You can see the close, but not the open. For now, we'll leave it at this basic, right? So here's the 12 volts. The ground is applied via the ECM. This is the injector on time where the magnetic field actually forms. At some point in time in here, the injector will the injector pintle will lift. Um, this is the point where the uh, the ground is removed by the ECM. The, the injector field collapses and the pintle will actually reseat. It's spring loaded back to the closed position, of course. And you can see that there's the pintle hump right there as the trace returns back down to the system voltage level. So um, a wee bit tricky here, guys. Um, as far as getting the trace on screen with respect to the triggering, um, I didn't I didn't foresee that to be quite honest, but I should have probably known better because I did notice that there was no way to adjust the uh, triggering point on the X axis across, right? Only the Y axis, you can adjust the voltage, but not the time scaling with respect to the trigger point. Some other scopes, most other scopes I'm aware of will allow you to adjust the trigger horizontally as well as vertically. This only seems to have a vertical adjustment and uh, I don't see any facility to select a set offset from the uh, start point, right? From the zero point here. Anyway, uh, I was going to do a few other things, guys, um, but I think this has probably run long enough and I think this is probably more than enough to actually uh, take in. So let me just show you one other thing here. So I'm fortunate enough to have a copy of the uh, factory manual for my car here, guys, and it's a great manual in the sense that it actually gives you reference waveforms that you can use to actually... Uh, um, check your car out whatever the subsystem actually might be so here is the reference for injector number one and um, the time base setting here is um, one millisecond uh, per division now, i appreciate that graticules can be in different layouts for different uh, scopes right but it is one millisecond per division here and uh, you can see here uh, i am two uh, fuel injection pulse two to four milliseconds which we saw we actually figured that that was about three milliseconds right in the middle of two to four. So this reference waveform and what we actually captured are quite similar. Again, on the trace here, you can see the pintle hump in the case of the uh, uh, the inductive spike. And then the, as the trace drops back down the system voltage, there's the pintle hump right there. Similar to what we actually see on the screen here. It's a shame that I couldn't get this a little wider on the... Uh, uh, time base wise and we could have seen it in a wee bit more detail but again i'm trying to cope with a 20 dollar scope it was the best i could do guys right so uh yeah so i would call this a semi-success it's not a disaster you know we can clearly see we have an uh, an injector trace here that looks reasonable we can see the system voltage dropping down to ground uh, we have the inductive spike and we have the pintle movement here again that's the closure not the open but that's sufficient to confirm that we have um proper uh, injector uh, function um, at least um, preliminary uh, confirmation that we have proper injector function that's good enough for now right anyway i hope that made some sense guys i'll leave it at that for now um we'll try another uh, sensor or uh, actuator uh on the system uh, at a later date that's it cheers